Hello, are you one of those people who call yourselves Christians? Oh yes! Listen, I want you never again to talk about Jesus Christ. No way! Fine, I'm going to pull out your fingernails one by one until you promise to shut up about your faith forever. Now, are you sure you still want to be a Christian? Uh, let me think about that again, Ken. Good morning. Today we come to the last of the Beatitudes. A tough one. Matthew chapter 5, verse 10 says, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for this is the kingdom of heaven. Like us, Jesus' original listener no doubt found that hard to swallow, and that's probably why this is the only Beatitude he repeats and elaborates on to let us know that Yes, we heard him right the first time, because he goes on to say, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now, Christianity started out as a tiny and despised minority, challenging established norms and upsetting the status quo. So not surprisingly, the early Christians were severely persecuted, and many Christian minorities under uh, authoritative regimes continue to suffer greatly even today. Well, most of us have never really suffered intense or uh, systemic persecution because we don't practice our faith under such adverse conditions. But one question that we ought to ask ourselves is whether our comfortable experience is attributable to an anemic and compromised faith so that people don't even notice any difference in us, let alone get upset by it. The Bible explains that authentic Christianity is always offensive in a certain way. Uh, I emphasize that we should never cause offense by being overzealous, fanatical, unwise, or being dismissive of other people's beliefs. But because Christ claims to be the only way and to be the light that exposes darkness, Christianity is by nature threatening and disruptive. If you are serious about living for Christ, becoming like Christ, and proclaiming Christ, then yes, even here in Singapore, you should expect people to do what Jesus said, insult you, persecute you, falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of him. In fact, this last beatitude follows immediately after the one about being peacemakers. That's right, as I said yesterday. Uh, if being peacemaker is simply about mediating between quarreling parties, then we should be welcomed and respected people, not persecuted. But Jesus' peacemaking is not about helping people to settle disputes. Rather, it is about showing people that through Christ and Christ alone, they can make peace with God. Now, we know it does often upset people when we preach Christ, and that's why Jesus now talks about persecution. How are those who undergo persecution for Christ's sake blessed or better off than those who don't? Well, first of all, it validates our faith. Not all suffering or even persecution is for the sake of righteousness. But the total lack of persecution raises serious, serious questions about the authenticity of our faith. Secondly, it identifies us with Christ uh, in a way that is unlike any other. You see, the desire of the Christian is to be like Christ in every way, even in his suffering. Pain is not something to be welcomed unless you have some mental condition, but having to go through pain for the sake of our beloved master is a badge of honor. The first time they were flogged for preaching Christ and forbidden to continue doing so, Acts chapter 5, verse 41 tells us the Apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. And then they went right on preaching and eventually even gave their lives for it. Thirdly, we can look forward to a reward. Now there is a debate over whether this is the reward of heaven uh, that's generally true for all believers or whether here Jesus is promising a special reward for those who endure persecution. Now I think 
Probably it refers to the latter because uh, Jesus says specifically to those who are persecuted, great is your reward. But the difference isn't all that important. The important thing is that when we eventually get to heaven, the glory that awaits us there is going to be so mind-blowing, it would make even the worst suffering and persecution here on earth feel worthwhile when we look back. Now having said all that, we still come back to this. How would we respond? How would we really respond when confronted with the threat of harm to ourselves or to our family members? Honestly, I don't know that I'll be able to do it. I don't dare to make any such claims. In fact, I admit that I'm a coward. What I do know is that the same apostles we read about just now were once just like me and probably just like you. They were uh, they scurried like cockroaches into hiding at the first threat of persecution when Jesus was arrested. Even the most brash among them denied Christ uh, vehemently with curses when confronted by little girls. What changed them? What changed them was a personal experience with the risen Christ that transformed them from mice into lions. They no longer feared persecution. They didn't just endure it stoically with a stiff upper lip. They rejoiced to go through it for the sake of Christ. What I do know is that I want that to be me too. And that for that to happen, my personal experience of God must be so, of Christ, must be so no less real than theirs. I must be equally convicted that He is the supreme Son of God who loved me so incredibly, He came to die for me and who overcame death and promised to raise me to everlasting glory if I put my trust wholly in Him. Please understand that this is not the pro kind of Christianity. There is only one version of Christianity. Uh, no advanced version of Christianity. There's only one version of Christianity and this is it. The kind that rejoices under persecution for Christ's sake. Jesus wants us to be very clear about this. Which is why the blessing for this beatitude, persecution, is exactly the same as for the first one. This is the kingdom of heaven. The people who rejoice in persecution are exactly the same people who are poor in spirit. Both are entry requirements for heaven. Tomorrow, I'll wrap up all the Beatitudes, but today as we look at this last one, let it, let it drive us to our knees to settle two fundamental issues in our hearts. First, does this describe my kind of faith? Do I dabble in Christianity? only to the extent that it is not too inconvenient. You know, many church leaders everywhere are rejoicing that so many more people are now attending services and CG online during this lockdown period. Maybe we should not go back to the old way of doing things. Actually, I see this personally as a sign of weakness, not strength. We need, this thing tells us that we need to repent of being so good at growing big, comfortable, respectable churches, but failing to call people to lay down their lives for Jesus Christ. Secondly, we need to ask ourselves, does this describe my personal knowledge of Christ? Am I daily growing in likeness to Him and in intimacy with Him that I would consider it an honor to suffer for His sake and entrust Him totally with my eternal destiny? If not, what must change in the way I relate to Him? Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for this is the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come to you and thank you for your amazing word. And there are just some things that are just uh, too incredible for us to grasp. So we ask uh, once more for Holy Spirit to come and make your word real to us, enlighten us to grasp it completely, that it will saturate our being, that it will renew our minds, and that it will transform our spirits so that we will take hold of it and live it out. Father, we want, we admit that we are cowards and we are fearful and we want to live comfortable, easy, pain-free, carefree lives. 
But Lord, help us to be so captured by the vision of a Christ who is supreme and who loves us so incredibly and that we were willing to do what He has done for us, to lay down our lives for His sake and consider it a badge of honour to be able to suffer for Him. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name I pray all this. Amen. Thank you for joining me for Morning Devotions. I'll see you again tomorrow morning at the same time for our last session for this series. Till then, God bless you and have a great week.